The clock is ticking, and the race to the moon is on. But wait, my space-loving friends, we've got a cosmic conundrum on our hands. As NASA gears up to send humans back to the lunar surface, they've stumbled upon a problem that could throw a wrench into their grand plans. Brace yourselves, because today, we're diving deep into the real reason behind NASA's urgent quest to create a lunar standard time. What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the space technician. Now, picture this. You're an astronaut, suited up and ready to make history on the moon. You've got a critical mission to complete, and timing is everything. But here's the shocking truth. The clocks on the moon tick to a different beat than those on Earth. That's right, my friends. Time itself behaves differently in the lunar realm. So, what does this mean for NASA's bold plans? Well, if they can't get their timekeeping ducks in a row, it could spell disaster for their lunar endeavors. Imagine missed rendezvous, botched experiments, and a whole lot of confused astronauts scratching their helmets. It's a ticking time bomb that NASA must defuse before it's too late. But fear not, because NASA has a plan to tackle this temporal tangle head-on. They call it Coordinated Lunar Time, or LTC for short, and it's about to revolutionize the way we keep time on the moon. Stick around as we unravel the science behind this cosmic timekeeping challenge and explore how NASA plans to sync up the moon's clocks with the rest of the universe. Let's get to it. Remember, strapping in is optional, but recommended. First, let's set the stage. As you know, NASA's Artemis program is gearing up to send astronauts back to the lunar surface by 2026 with the ultimate goal of establishing a sustainable human presence on our celestial neighbor. But here's the thing. Time works differently on the moon compared to Earth. Due to the difference in gravitational forces, clocks on the moon tick faster by about 58.7 microseconds per day. Now, that might not seem like much, but when you're dealing with precision navigation, communication, and coordination between Earth and the moon, Every microsecond counts. Let's say you're an astronaut on the moon and you need to rendezvous with a lunar lander at a specific time. If your clock is off by even a fraction of a second, you could miss your window and be left stranded in the vast expanse of space. That's where Coordinated Lunar Time, or LTC, comes in. By establishing a unified time standard for the moon, NASA aims to ensure that all lunar missions operate on the same temporal page, reducing the risk of timing errors and increasing mission success rates. But how exactly will LTC work? Well, my friends, it's all about the atomic clocks. On Earth, we rely on a global network of atomic clocks to keep our time in sync. These marvels of modern science are the unsung heroes of precise timekeeping. Unlike your everyday wristwatch, which relies on the oscillations of a quartz crystal, atomic clocks take things to a whole new level. They measure time by tracking the ultra-precise frequency of electrons transitioning between energy levels within atoms, typically using elements like cesium or rubidium. These atomic oscillations are so remarkably stable that atomic clocks can keep time with an accuracy of one second in millions or even billions of years. But here's where things start to get mind-boggling. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity has a profound effect on time itself. The stronger the gravitational field, the slower time ticks by. This means that a clock on Earth's surface, where gravity is stronger, will tick slightly slower than a clock in orbit or on the Moon, where gravity is weaker. This effect, known as gravitational time dilation, has been measured with exquisite precision using atomic clocks. In fact, the global positioning system GPS, that we rely on every day must take into account these relativistic effects to provide accurate navigation. The atomic clocks on board GPS satellites orbiting high above Earth's surface tick slightly faster than the clocks on the ground. If these relativistic corrections weren't made, GPS would accumulate errors of about 11 kilometers per day. That's the power of relativity in action. Now, 
let's bring this back to the moon. As we mentioned earlier, gravity on the lunar surface is about one-sixth that of Earth's. This means that atomic clocks on the moon will tick faster than their terrestrial counterparts. To create a truly accurate and stable lunar standard time, NASA must account for these relativistic effects with incredible precision. But it's not just a simple matter of making a one-time adjustment. The moon's gravity isn't uniform across its surface. Mass cons or mass concentrations scattered beneath the lunar crust create subtle variations in the gravitational field. These mass cons can cause local fluctuations in time dilation, which must be carefully mapped and accounted for when synchronizing atomic clocks on the moon. Moreover, the moon is not a perfect sphere. Its shape and topography also influence the local gravity field, adding another layer of complexity to the timekeeping equation. To establish a robust lunar standard time, NASA will need to create a detailed gravitational model of the moon, taking into account these subtle variations and their effects on time. But the challenges don't stop there. As NASA deploys its network of atomic clocks on the lunar surface, they must also contend with the harsh lunar environment. Extreme temperatures, radiation, and the abrasive lunar dust pose significant challenges for the delicate instruments. Engineers must develop rugged, reliable, and self-sustaining clock systems that can withstand these conditions and maintain their accuracy over long periods. And let's not forget about the importance of international collaboration in this endeavor. Establishing Lunar Standard Time is not a task that NASA can undertake alone. Cooperation with space agencies like ESA, JAXA, and Roscosmos will be essential to ensure a unified and globally accepted time standard. This means navigating the complex world of international agreements, technical standards, and diplomatic negotiations. Speaking of diplomatic negotiations, the quest for Lunar Standard Time isn't just some wild idea cooked up by NASA's brainiacs. No, this cosmic timekeeping adventure has the full backing of the White House itself. That's right, the highest office in the land has officially given NASA its marching orders. Establish a unified time standard for the moon and make it snappy. But why the sudden urgency from the White House? Well, it all ties back to the Artemis Accords a set of principles signed by nations joining forces in the new era of lunar exploration. The White House recognizes that as more countries and private companies set their sights on the moon, a unified timekeeping system becomes absolutely critical. It's not just about avoiding missed appointments, it's about ensuring the safety, coordination, and success of all lunar missions. So, NASA finds itself at the helm of this international timekeeping endeavor tasked with bringing together space agencies and partners from around the world to make LTC a reality. It's a daunting challenge, but one that NASA is ready to tackle head-on. The White House has given them the green light, and they have to do it. So there you have it, spacers, the real reason behind NASA's push for lunar standard time. By creating a unified timekeeping system for the moon, NASA is laying the foundation for a new era of lunar exploration and scientific discovery. With LTC in place, astronauts, rovers, and future lunar bases will be able to coordinate their activities with unprecedented precision, paving the way for sustained human presence on the Moon and eventually missions to Mars and beyond. As always, thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey, spacers. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell notification. I've got plenty more exciting space content coming your way on the channel, so stay tuned. This is the Space Technician, signing off for now. And I'll see you, Space Cowboys, in the next one.